out of something. It's amazing, amazing how 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 much greatness he can get out of something. This this always is is amazing to me. Uh, how much greatness he can get out of something that's weak, something that's small. Let's look at Second Corinthians chapter twelve now. Y'all got Second Corinthians chapter twelve. I want to read a verse to you, and then we're gonna get ready to go, get on. We're gonna go home. All right, Second Corinthians now. Uh, Uh, I need somebody to read that for me. Okay, I need you to read verses. Uh, <sighs> Start at verse. Let me get to the right Corinthians. I'm in first Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter. Second Corinthians chapter twelve. And verse 7. Somebody read verse 7. Read till I tell you to stop. At least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, least I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Y'all, y'all get that? Come on, one more verse. I am become a fool in glorying. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you. For in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. <laughs> you see, God said, listen. Paul says in the text, he says, the enemy mm -hmm. placed something in my flesh. Yes. He says, and what was in my flesh was so uncomfortable. Yes. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm paraphrasing wow. what Paul said. He says, what was in my flesh was so uncomfortable that I told God, mm. if you don't remove it, I can't do what you told me. He said, and he responded to me and said, I ain't going to remove it. And you still going to do what I told you to do. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to remove what's bothering you in your flesh. But I'm going to give you grace that will be sufficient, that will allow you to still do what I told you to do, even though that which is in your flesh is still there. Yes. He says, so now you can get over that flesh part because I'm not going to remove that, but I'm going to give you the grace to do what I told you to do. Amen. And he says, so when you are in the midst of being weak, he says, that's when my strength is made perfect. He says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So when you're going through, when you feel like you're not enough, that's the perfect time for God to use you to do something. Because God never makes something out of something. He's made known for making something out of nothing. So when I become nothing, now I become something that God can use to make something out of. Y'all get this? And so God is now saying, I'm going to do something in your life that's going to be so great that your flesh will never be able to take uh, credit for it. He says, I'm going to do something. I don't care how, lot, how well your life may look like it's going right now. Because everybody's life ain't doing well. I don't care how well things look like they may be going. He says, never forget that it is me that is doing that in your life. That's right. And the only reason I'll continue doing it is if you will continue meaning being nothing. Because when you are nothing, he says, that's when I can use you in the best way. Because God is amazing. He created this world out of nothing. Yes. He he he. He started with nothing and made something out of this world. It's amazing how a God can start with nothing, speak to nothing, and create it out of, from nowhere. 
shaped us into who we are, breathed the breath of life into That's us, right. gave us life. We are nothing but yes. dirt. Yes. But he, because his life, because his breath is in us, because the Holy Spirit is in us, now we're being used. And how dare us get so exalted in ourselves and think we are so much. Understanding that we are just functioning because his breath is in us. And if he was to take his breath away, we would go right back to the dirt from which we came from. Yes. But because his spirit is in us, we are the remnant of dirt yes. Yes. that's left. To give him blow. Ah, I don't care how tough it's been. I don't care how bad it's been. Has it been tough yet? Going through yet? Church ministry has been tough. Financially tough. Your name, that, I'm telling you, God's going to do something uh-huh. great in the midst of this. Yes, God. So I wanted to encourage you in that area. Thank I want to tell you to stand. I want to tell you to keep fighting. Make your plans. So when he spoke to me, he spoke this to me the other day. I got up and I said, okay, I got to make my plans now. I started calling folk. I called folk I ain't talked to in a long time. I said, yeah, I need to talk to you. you, I got an idea. God has given me something. I want to use it. I need your help. Called up Cooks last night. I need your help. He said, man, how do you come up with these ideas? I said, man, my creativity kicks in when I'm going through real tough. Mm, Bless your name, Jesus. When times are tough, that's that's your best time to be creative. I close with this story. Uh, you know, my son uh, uh, Russell is very creative. All of them are very creative. But I just want to use this story here. He was when he was uh, messing with the wood projects. And he had cut out a the United States. He was making a table for someone. He just made an Africa table. Now a table shaped in the continent of Africa. Now he was making one of the United States. So he, out of a big piece of wood, he cut out the shape of the United States. And when he cut it out, he had drilled a hole. He had traced around. So you had this square shaped piece of wood with a piece of shape that was cut out, United States. The piece where he cut the United States out, he was getting ready to throw away. He was going to only use the part that he cut out. And I was riding along one day, and I, I said, "Well, I said, Russ, I said, what are you going to do with the piece that's left over? He said, I, I don't know. What do you think? I said, man, you need to take that and put something in it and replace it with something. I said, you can make something out of it. And lo and behold, that's where he created that beautiful piece of the United States with the flag in it and the ceramic yeah. tile. Yeah. Every piece yes. Thank you. inside of that is a broken piece. And if you leave it by itself, oh, God. it has no value to it at all. But when you put it all together and bond it together yeah. with something, that's right. in an organized way, somebody said organized way. Organized way. way. Now you walk away with this masterpiece. Yes, God. So he does this masterpiece and uh, does it and presents it to his chancellor at AMT and he's got the president, uh, you know, Obama's picture on it and, 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 and chancellor's picture on it and, and he takes it and, and, and details it all out and, and just, I mean, just amazing. Yes. What are you saying? I'm saying that don't throw away what you got left. Right there. <laughs> Thank you, God. Don't throw away what you got left. God wants to use your remnant yes. for His glory. Amen. He wants to use your. Yeah, I, 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 I got one more for you. Now. I know I got to go. Do I'm gonna be lying, preacher? <laughs> you know, I, I used to play bass guitar. I used to Woo. musician. I used to, man, I used to love it. You know, pretty good at it. I thought, and. Uh, so I don't, I don't play no more like I used to, you know. I, I, my, in my mind, Coach, I can still hear it, but I can't do it. You understand? You understand? I, 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 I can still hear it. So, so every now and then, I hear a lick. Now, because I can't do it no more, you know, most people just throw it away. Now, what I do now is I take that lick and say, okay. I said, Russell, I heard this lick the other day. Here it is right here. He will figure out what it was. Oh, that right there, yeah. I said, yeah, can you do anything with that? 
And then he'll come back with this amazing piece of music that he has put together right. Thank you. My point is, what you have left over yeah. is still so valuable. Yeah. And you cannot afford to throw it away because you can't put it together. Mm. Take what you have and put it in the hands of the master yeah. and let him make it into something great for you. You're going to be amazed what happens. Now, there is a process. There's a process. I, I won't take credit for this one, but I can't take it. Uh, but I was talking to Bishop Brooks yesterday and he was, you know, you know, I, I, and I was talking to Sharon, you know, this where I am and where I'm going and what I'm trying to do and, you know, the challenges and all that. He says, he says, have you ever seen a rocket launched down in Cape Canaveral? I said, yeah. He said, man, that thing powerful, man. It just takes off and just, just goes right in the sky. He said, yeah. He said, but have you ever seen them move it to the launching pad? He said, that thing goes one mile an hour. They got it ready to go. It's got all this power, but it can't do nothing until you get it to the launching pad. He said, that he said it literally moves one mile. I don't know if y'all ever seen it. They have to lay all this heavy stuff down in there, moving that whole pad. They don't build it on the launching pad. They build it in another place, and then they have to move it to the launching pad because it can't go up until it gets to the launching pad. Your life, God has built in a different place than where he's going to launch it. Yes. And you can't complain now when you're on the pad being moved over. Come on, come on. <laughs> Looks like it's taking a long time, coach. Come on. And you know you're ready. You understand? You know you're ready because everything has been put together. You understand? That you already feel, I mean, yeah, I got everything I need to go to another atmosphere. All you got to do is push the button. But what they're saying is I can't launch you until I get you to the pad. Y'all, y'all get me. And so it moves real slow. Yes, yes. And if you ain't careful, you'll start. Let me see. Let me see. If we got some real sight. You'll start cussing while you're being moved in position. Because <laughs> you're ready to. You're ready to go. You understand? I'm fueled up. I got all this power, and I can't understand now. You have built me to fly into space. You have built. I've been designed to go into another atmosphere. And so it takes literally days, weeks to move it. After it's ready to the place where it's going to launch. I wanted to tell you that the Father's house of glory, yes, it's taken some time. It's taken some time. Yes, we are ready. But he has to move us to the launching pad. Don't quit while you're in the process. Yes, God. Amen. Let's set to our feet. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your day. Yes, Lord. God, we thank you, God, that you have spoke to us. Yes, Lord. You have, God, just have been an amazing God to us. Amen. And we just praise you that you have kept 